welcome to the first ever podcast of The Crafting Sparrow. Um, my name is Amanda, and I am the creator behind The Crafting Sparrow Instagram. Um, it's kind of something I just started when I first learned how to crochet and then eventually knit. Um, I wanted to kind of take the leap into the podcasting world because I've seen so many great podcasters take that leap, and they've had so much fun with it. Um, I am kind of shy, so it's a bit out of my comfort zone, but I uh, really wanted to, to give it a try. So um, I kind of just want to share with you guys what I've been working on, um, what I'd like to make, and uh, I'm not the kind of person that usually has like a bunch of projects going on at once. It kind of gets me overwhelmed when I have like five projects going on, the knitting and stuff. But I do a lot of different kinds of crafts, like knitting and crocheting, and you can see there I do a lot of cross-stitching. So I will usually have like one project of each type of craft. Um, so I don't really have any finished objects this time because I've been working on this really big cardigan project called the, the Merit Cardigan. Here are. Um, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but yeah, so I hope you guys really enjoy. Um, I will see how this goes and <laughs> probably work out some kinks over, over a couple episodes. But yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So as I said, my first work in progress is my Marit cardigan. Um, I have been really, really enjoying this. It's, I expect it to be a lot slower than it actually has. I, I think I started it like two weeks ago and um, I started with the sleeves first because I am not a swatcher in the round. I can't stand swatching in the round. I don't like having to like carry the strings over and like thinking about cutting yarn that I could use stresses me out. <laughs> so anyway, I started with the sleeves because I actually altered the pattern quite a bit as far as needle size goes. I think that the pattern calls for like a US zero um, for the ribbing and like a US two. I may be wrong about that. But anyway, the only needles I have on that size is my Haya Haya needles and they are not the interchangeable needles like my Takumi Clovers are, which I love. So instead of those tiny needles, I used the smallest interchangeable clover needles that I have, which the ribbing was a US 3, 3.25 millimeter. Um, and then for the, the body, I used a, a US 4, 3.5 millimeter. So that's a pretty big change from what the pattern called for. And like I said, I didn't want to swatch. So I went ahead and started the sleeve and kind of wanted to see if it was going to work um, for like a size down from what I would have originally done. So, and I also wanted it to be oversized. So I knew it was going to be okay as long as I tested out the sleeves and they weren't too much bigger than what I was wanting and they turned out okay. So I went ahead and did the second one and then I started the sleeve, uh, the body. Um, and so yeah, I've got my two sleeves. And they're actually not technically finished <laughs> because the design is a drop shoulder and I've never actually made a drop shoulder before. So I wasn't sure how long I needed to make them. So I kept the yarn on there and there's a bunch of stuff you have to do when you finish the sleeve. Um, but I think I'm gonna do like, maybe like two more repeats before I, I finish, the, finish the sleeves off. Yeah, I'm really loving it. Um, oh, and the yarn. The yarn is Knit Picks Palette. I fell in love with this wool originally when I used it for uh, Fiber Tails um, Woodlark Shaw, which was also my first steaking project. And because this is also a steaking project, I figured I would stick with the wool I'm familiar with. It's also very soft. And um, the colors I'm using are, the yellow is um, turmeric. And the brown is, thicket and this is like the the larger 
contrast color with like the most motifs we're using this one. This is the smaller motif color. And then I don't have a unopened packet of the the main color. I'll grab it for you. So this is the main color. I think it's called Hair Heather, I believe. It's a really pretty, like, beigey brown. I don't know. But I really like how the colors go together. Um, Knit Pink Palette has a lot of different colors that you can get. And it's very, very soft. It doesn't have too much, like, itch to it. Um, if you're not familiar with this yarn, it is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. And... <laughs> I am located in the Midlands of South Carolina, and wool sometimes can be kind of an iffy choice because even our winters aren't that cold, but I just love it so much, I make it work. <laughs> yeah, so I am almost ready to, oh, don't want to drop my sleeve. I'm almost ready to stop working in the round for this color work project. Um, so that means I have to work flat <laughs> with color work, which I have never done before. So it'll be interesting trying to pearl in with color work and with two stranded colors, but I'm really excited for the, um, the learning experience for that. <laughs> um, and it's going to be like really, really big, which again, like I said, I'm okay with because this is right there it's it's already like very very large you can tell and the um the shoulders i'm not quite sure because i changed the the needle size i'm gonna have to like change the number of stitches that i'm gonna bind off as i shape the, for the shoulder but i think what i'm gonna have to do is just de uh, t bind off less stitches than what the pattern is calling for if I kept to the number of bind off stitches that they recommend, then my neck shaping is probably going to be like really, really wide, and I don't want that. So it's going to be kind of an experiment, but I think that I think it'll work out. We'll see. Um, but yeah, that is my one knitting project that I have on the needles. I know it's a bit strange. Most of the podcasters that I watch, they have like a bunch of works in progress going on at once, and it's so cool to see how they juggle those things around um but i i just i'm not that person so you're gonna see one works in progress maybe one finished object um for each of the crafts that i make and that one is my knitting yep so my crochet project is something you're gonna see a lot over um the podcast because it is a <laughs> It's a scrappy project. I don't have any like ongoing crochet projects right now for like like a single project kind of thing. But this is a just like a granny stripe square blanket that I've been working on for a very long time. Um, probably almost a year, I think. Yeah, and it is huge. It's gonna fit a full no a queen size bed hopefully. And I started off with just like double stranded worsted weight yarn and it's like really really tight <laughs> um and then i just do a single stripe for each yarn and, and they're all different mix and match weights of yarn um <laughs> because i don't have like a single weight of yarn that i like to use i just pick out something that i have in my stash and and i go with it um it creates a lot of different textures uh creates a lot of different um, drapes in the blanket, and I love it. Um, I don't know if I can show you all of all of the colors. Yeah, this is where I started, and I just kept adding and adding. <laughs> and you can see, there is some like really chunky yarns. I think this is a bulky, and then I even have some fingering weight yarn here yeah <clears throat> so you'll see this a lot I usually only work on it in between like knitting projects to give my wrist a break from you know doing that single motion 
I will switch to crochet on my blanket um, unless I have a different crochet project that I'm working on but yep that is my scrappy blanket oh and I think I use a nine nine millimeter crochet hook one of the really big ones um, just so that I can accommodate for the bulky yarns it's a bit weird working with the fingering yards in that size but it's not that bad um, I really enjoy it oh and the <laughs> the the ends for the yarn I always start on the edge or at least I try to unless I run out so there's like all this fringy <laughs> on the end I don't know if you can see that <laughs> all the fringe and I haven't decided yet whether I want to like weave them all in or if I want to kind of make it look like tassely by adding some more or maybe like making them a little bit more consolidated and like cutting off the, the strands so they're a lot more even I don't know or I was also thinking about doing just like a, a neutral border on it once it's finished um yeah we'll see it's still, I've still got quite some time to figure that out because I think I'm about three fourths of the way for it to fit on a queen size bed. So, yep. Um, yeah, so that is my crochet <laughs> work in progress. It's kind of a long-term one. And uh, speaking of long-term projects, I have my cross stitch project. Um, this has been going on for like three years. <laughs> it was an image that I found on the internet when I, I wanted to start a really big project. I knew I wanted to do a, like a very, uh, what do you call it, navel type image and put it into a cross stitch. So I found this one. It's called the um, Fragata Española is the ship name and I just found an image a really high-res image on Google and I put it into pick to pat which is a, a website and uh, I like with pick to pat you can you can mess around with the number of colors you need to use or like the uh, amount of detail that's showing and obviously the more detail the more colors and it's really cool because it spits out a PDF pattern and it's, it's free, by the way. It spits out a PDF pattern with symbols, and the symbols uh, represent a DMC floss number. So when you put it into that program, it will give you a list of all the DMC floss colors that you need, and you just go to your, your local craft store and you grab all those flosses and you just get started. Uh, this one's gonna be fairly large. It's rolled up right now. And I'll try to remember to include an image of it unfurled. Um, I think it's going to be like 18, 18 inches by 20 inches, maybe. Um, and all I have left is this last little, <laughs> these last little lines right there. So I'm really, really close. It's just that when I learned how to knit and crochet, I just, it took over all my hobbies. Um, so it's it's always kind of on the back burner but I think that I'm gonna have a little bit more oomph to, to, to get it done because I recently got this book um, for my birthday and I love all the all the patterns in here uh, it has a lot of like nature sayings like things about bees and and going outside and uh, a lot of pretty like animals and trees and I really 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 want to make a bunch of these and like hang them up in my house um, so hopefully that will give me some <laughs> motivation to finish this <laughs> and get started on some new ones because I have not started a new cross stitch project since I started this one so it's been a long long time uh, so yeah that is my cross stitch project So, at this point, that's all the projects that I have been working on at this moment. I, I have a lot of future projects that I want to try out. I have some 
projects in mind that are of my own creation. I know I want to make a scarf with some cabling details, but I want to try and make that my first ever written pattern for purchase. It's another kind of out of my comfort zone leap that I want to make this year. Um, and I have some big ideas for it. It's, I'll say this, it's going to be a really big scarf with cabling. That's, that's what I'll, I'll tell you guys now. Um, I, I've been using this book. It's a, a really nice book for finding cable designs, getting inspiration for maybe making your own, which is what I hope to do. There's, they have a lot of like lacy cable. They have a lot of like leaf decals. Uh, anything that you can think of really for for a cable they'll have a chart for it and they even tell you like how to read charts for cables and everything it's very informative I really like this book and yeah so I plan on I plan on doing that pretty soon here I also want to get a jump on the holiday season and uh, knit some custom stockings for me and my husband I wanted to do it last year, but I got a little excited about making gifts for everybody for Christmas, my family and friends and stuff. So that took most of my knitting time uh, from October through the end of the year. And I had a lot of fun with it, but I think this year I'm gonna focus on those stockings and lots of color work sweaters. I actually found a color work crochet sweater that I want to try out and I'll try I'll try to find a picture of it and post them in the video if I can figure out how to do that <laughs> um, yeah let's see what else I've got I got my little my little journal that I wrote down for my first podcast um, I love this journal I got it on Amazon it's um Peter Popper papers they have a lot of really pretty deta decals and the paper almost reminds me of like a like an old timey notebook. It's really really cute. Um, so yeah, let's see what else I had written. Oh oh, for future projects, um, I really want to make a garland for my office door with like fall colored leaves. So I think I'm gonna cash those on pretty soon here once I get past the purling color work for my Marit cardigan. Um, I'm gonna do a bunch of like scrap yarn that I have with like burgundies and greens and yellows and, and crochet some some leaves and string them up and put them on my office door because I need a little bit of holiday at my office. <laughs> uh, and I'll probably end up using the crochet pattern from Happy Berry Crochet. She was actually the YouTuber that I learned crochet with. My first little crochet project was a little stuffed pig. Actually, I got it up here little stuffed pig <laughs> this is the first thing I crocheted and she's just she's got some really cool little little trinket patterns and and everything so I'm probably gonna use hers or look on Ravelry, Ravelry and find some different ones and and string them together and put them up on my door those are those are probably my next little crochet project and um, yeah so we'll probably talk about those next time if I've cashed them on and oh I forgot to mention what I'm wearing this is the Willa T by this bird knits and I am using knit picks Lindy chain you'll find me using knit picks a lot because they're they're always really fast to ship and I don't have any local yarn stores other than Hobby Lobby and I I don't know, I'm not really a big fan of Hobby Lobby's yarns. Um, so I usually resort to Knit Picks. But anyway, I use the, the Knit Picks Lindy Chain, which is a linen cotton blend, I believe. And it's in a chain at construction. This is the color Conch. And yeah, I really love, I think this is my favorite summer top that I made this past summer. It was super fast because, let's see, I used a US 7 for the ribbing and a US 8. Uh, needle size for the body so it was like super quick and I really like the chain at construction um I don't know it's just not as as rough as like your typical linen uh, I haven't worked with just typical linen before but I've been in a store before where they had it and 
I wasn't a fan of the way it felt in my hands. Uh, I know that they say it gets really soft after a while, but um, I don't know. I, I really like this one, the way this felt right off the bat. So uh, I, I do recommend this yarn. It's like I said, it, it's it's not like super soft. Like uh, cotton's pretty soft to me, or I don't know, like a premium acrylic or like a, a, a mohair or something. But it's it's nice in the summertime, especially here in the south where it's super muggy and this breathes a bit and yeah so I've really enjoyed wearing this a lot and the color is just gorgeous don't mind my cat in the background cleaning herself <laughs> you guys will probably see my two cats walking around in the background a lot um, I have a black one and a white one and they're my babies but <laughs> yeah so I know it's kind of short, I'm probably talking really fast because of my nerves, but, and like I said, I don't really have very many things to talk about because I, I only usually have one project going for each craft. Um, and also, um, yeah, I just, I just don't have a lot going on. Um, I just wanted to talk in the void, if you will, and share with everybody that is interested and yeah uh, I will try to remember to put all the things I talked about in the description box it's my first YouTube video so <laughs> it's a it's a learning curve for me um, <laughs> yeah I'll try to remember to do all that for you guys and I will try to remember to put the images on one of these sides <laughs> yeah well thank you so much for watching um if anybody's watching <laughs> let me know how like the audio is and, and if if the the camera is focusing right because i have to manually focus things and if you have any questions or suggestions i am very open to them because i this is just like very new for me um but yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week. I probably will not record again till I get done with the Marit cardigan, just because I'd like to have something new on the needle to show you guys, and that way I can talk about it as a finished object. So, take care. Uh, knit away, crochet away, craft away. <laughs> and if you want to see more between videos, I am very active on my Instagram, The Crafting Sparrow. I don't really have an active Ravelry, it's just where I go to buy patterns. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. Take care. <laughs>